Hello and welcome everybody. Uh, let's start the talk. Welcome to the art of Obeya hosting. My name is Mark Marijnissen and uh, I'm a coach at Organize Agile, where I help organizations transform to become a learning organization, organization that continuously improves. And in the past, in my background, I used to study artificial intelligence. I also used to practice Aikido, but I didn't become the world champion. And I also used to be a trainer in nonviolent communication, which is about cultivating compassion. It's about conflict resolution and collaboration. So I have these two sides of me, the technical nerd who does artificial intelligence, as well as the human side who likes to help people collaborate and uh, conflict resolution. And those two come very nicely together in the Obeya. Um, we've seen it before, uh, but let me summarize my version of it. The Obeya is a physical or digital room with all the information visualized on the wall, which allows us to go from the big strategy to execution, from insight or perhaps knowledge to action with inclusive and sustainable decisions. And in this talk, we'll be talking about hosting an Obeya, which focuses on the last part. How can we move people from getting shared understanding, getting knowledge, getting insight towards action and how to do this in a way that is inclusive so everybody can participate and sustainable, meaning decisions, they hold up to the test of time. They're not only good for short-term profits, but also for the people and the planet. And one way we can visualize hosting, so the diamond you see below, there's a first part where you have to create knowledge together, get insight together. It's a divergent phase where you explore and got all sorts of things. And then there's a moment you have to turn knowledge into action and you make a decision. And you see the three person on top of it, meaning it's inclusive. And today I'll be talking about the art of Obeya hosting. And to fully appreciate what Obeya hosting is about, I will first start with the complaint I hear everywhere as an organization coach. All the people say, we have too many meetings. And when I ask a bit more, it's not the frequency, too many, but the quality. And we already solved this issue in one way and in another way. And then Obeya House adds still something to that. So to fully appreciate the Obeya House role, I will first uh, explain existing solutions. Well, let's dive into the uh, root cause. Oh, I'm sure I'm... Uh, um, I want to know what are you curious about? You joined this talk. Uh, so answer in the chat what you're curious about. Uh, I have a colleague, Michiel, who is here and can interrupt me if there are important questions. Um, and I would encourage you to uh, ask questions, share opinions, share reactions in the chat during this talk. Afterwards, we'll have either a question and answer section or we will do a live exercise in Obeya hosting to see if we can uh, help you out with Obeya hosting. Um, so I'm curious to learn a bit about you. Um, do you have an Obeya? Are you hosting one? Uh, what are you curious about? Please write it in the chat. And in the meanwhile, let me introduce these meeting monkeys. They all represent one of the things I often see happening in meetings. So let me share you about a meeting I had a while ago. I was presenting a plan for transforming an organization to a management team with the CEO and all kinds of managers there. And we had 30 minutes to discuss the plan and see if it's a good plan and to agree upon it. So after first introducing the plan, we get sidetracked. Uh, we're asking like, how do we get to the Scrum Masters? How do we recruit these people? Where do we find them? And after like 25 minutes, the CEO says, well, wait a minute, let's get back on topic. Uh, time is almost up, shall we just do the plan? And I see the people getting a bit confused. They're like, yeah, I don't fully get the plan yet, but it seems right, so let's do it. And then the last minute of this half hour, the CEO says, okay, let's just do it. And in this single meeting, I see three common issues in meetings. So first one is you see on the diamonds, having um, insight, but no action. If you get sidetracked or discuss a lot of options or you brainstorm a lot, but you get, make no decision, you get nowhere. This happened in the beginning. And then suddenly time was up. We have actually 
uh, action without any insight. Knowledge without action is nonsense, as Tim said before. And then the third one is we have the CEO in the room who just overrules and just decides whether people agree with it or not. Um, and I'm curious to know, how do we stop these old meeting habits to ruin an obey session? Because we can have this beautiful room with all the visuals there, all the insights are here. But if we keep having our old habits come in, we're sure to have the same unproductive meetings again. And I'm, this is like similar to having a fancy iPad and then you're bringing in the old tools to uh, use it. So this is what I think hosting should really solve, how to create a space of co-creation. And I'm curious to hear about you. What issues do you see in Obeya sessions or in your own meetings? Is it insight, no action, or action without insight? A person dominating or something else, type it in the chat. You can type a letter in the chat, another issue. If we have time at the end of this uh, little talk, we can perhaps see how we can fix this issue using Obeya hosting techniques. All right, I see answers coming in, that's great. Um, so let's dive into the root cause of these meetings. Um, there are many things I can think why we have these bad meeting dynamics. For example, when people get hired or promoted, they're often hired for the technical expertise or the domain knowledge. Sure, if we recruit people, then we say we want to have good collaboration skills, but in the end, it's mostly the, the technical expertise that matters. And I think the problem goes even deeper than that. When I'm in a meeting, when I see others in the meeting, we're often so very busy with making our own points, with selling our own pitch, or we're busy with evaluating what others say, what do I think of it? Do I think it's good or bad? That we really are preoccupied with the content and we forget to take care about the process, the process of generating insights and then moving to actions. So this is a common blind spot people have in meetings. But fortunately, we have solved this already. The first solution I often see in organizations is chairing the meeting. Here we see one person who makes an agenda and he says, let's move to the agenda items. He keeps track of the time. And this person has a double role action. He's both facilitating the meeting with the agenda as well as sharing his own opinion. And to make matters worse, when you chair the meeting, it's often the leader or the CEO who does it. So you have positional authority messing things up. Here I can see that this solution is not so very good because it gives rise to the three common issues I see. Facilitation skills of a CEO, they not, not might be very skilled at this because they are not trained for this. Sharing opinions is something that CEO uh, uh, does and they even have the authority to cut things short. So, as I said before, if the blind spot is taking care of the process, because we're so busy with the content, it might be a good idea to separate content from facilitation. And this actually is what the second solution is all about. It's a facilitated meeting. We have a dedicated facilitator whose job it is to create good meeting dynamics. So how would a facilitator solve this issue? And as I said, we have first have to learn how a normal facilitation facilitator does this. And if you have learned this, we can appreciate what an Obeya host adds to this. The first tool of a facilitator is meeting design. If we have a brainstorm that has no action, a facilitator can say, let's have a discussion part and then an action part. On the other hand, if we feel very rushed to make decisions, we have no time, a facilitator can say, that's time box all agenda items. Every item gets a slot of 10 minutes, so we have time for everything. And finally, to prevent the hippo, uh, the highest paid person's opinion, uh, to prevent the CEO from dominating the discussion, we can have, for example, a question round where we ask to every member, do you have questions? So participation is more equal. And of course, a facilitator is also present during the meeting. And here he has a second technique, interventions. When this discussion gets sidetracked, if I would be there in this management meeting I told you about before, I was presenting my plans to management team. If he would have a facilitator instead of a chair, 
facilitator would say, hey, we're getting sidetracked. We're talking about Scrum Masters, but we should talk, be talking about this plan to transform. Shall we return to that one? And if the facilitator noticed the decision is getting rushed, he might do an intervention. Wait a minute. We only discussed the Scrum Master, not the entire plan. If we're still having doubts, shall we schedule another meeting? And if then the CEO tries to kind of rush it through, he might intervene and say, wait a minute, I haven't heard from this guy yet. I'm curious what you think about this to distribute the participation. Still, there are three ways that an Obeya host can improve upon facilitation. The first thing is a bit of a riddle. It's does the facilitator facilitate the meeting? And what I mean with this is, if we have a facilitated meeting, who does it? Often I see it's a Scrum Master. And the Scrum Master is also uh, teaching people about Scrum, mentoring, and his primary goal is to make Scrum work. Or somebody else who knows how to facilitate meetings and has an expert on creating good dynamics is a team coach. But the team coach is not here in Obey or in the meetings. He is here to help team development. And finally, other people who are very good at creating productive meeting dynamics are often trainers. They don't know how to engage a crowd, how to create good vibes, but they are here to teach things. It's only very, very rare that they see an actual facilitator facilitating the meeting. And we only tend to use them when there's a complex multi-stakeholder problem or a big conference, then we hire a facilitator. And I find this really strange, given that we all complain about having too many meetings. We all know that they're boring or there are no decisions being made. So why don't we have somebody there to just take care of it? So the first thing an Obeya host can do is say, let's make productive meeting dynamics for purpose. Person who just only cares about having this good collaboration happen. Second improvement, who is doing all the hard work? We saw that the facilitator does the meeting design. He keeps constantly monitoring if there are good interactions. He intervenes by asking questions. And I think here we can le learn from the team coach because the team coach is lazy. He will help people learn themselves to have good collaboration skills. So I would argue an obey a host can improve by shifting from making meeting dynamics your purpose to cultivating productive meeting habits. As a host, you're responsible to make a group of people create good meeting habits so that they themselves can have a good meeting. You can think about the dinner party. In the dinner party, if you have a dinner party, you will not facilitate the conversation between your friends. You will host the space. And the people themselves, they actually have know how to make conversation. I find it very funny that we have very bad meeting habits, but very good dinner party habits. Because at the dinner party, you might offer to help cleaning and do the dishes, help cooking. You know you're responsible yourself to have good conversations. And at the end, we don't say, thanks that the, that the facilitator facilitated this dinner party. We just remember having a good time with friends. Then the third improvement a host can do is look at the scenery. You're in an Obeya room. You're in the big room with visuals. And we can use this room to our advantage. So to summarize, the Obeya host help attendees cultivate better meeting habits that help them transform from insight to action in an inclusive way and sustainable way. And being a skilled host requires making this your purpose as well as using the room to your advantage. So let's move on from kind of the theory to a practical technique. One of my favorite techniques is the Obeya host troubleshoot list. To cultivate better habits, you need to prevent issues. And preventing issues might sound very negative. It sounds like you're focused on solving issues and all that. But actually, I would say it comes from a very positive worldview. You're saying, in fact, you can do it yourself. If you only had these good meeting habits, if you only resolve the issues, then it's perfectly natural that as people, we want to collaborate, we want to communicate, we want to solve problems together and move on. So by removing 
the impediments and working on the habits, it becomes a flowing natural thing to do. And the obey a troubleshoot list works as follows. It has a priority list. So as a host, you first try to prevent issues with hosting. And what do I mean with this? Hosting means using visual management, obey agreements, the invitation, and the room to your advantage. If this doesn't solve the issue, then you use the facilitator technique of meeting design, which means having an agenda, exercises. If still, then the issue happens, you intervene. And as an uh, uh, obey a host, you take this coaching quality and you use skillful questions to uh, solve these issues. And finally, if still it didn't happen, we reflect and improve. And coming from the agile world, and as we learned as well from the Obeya world, uh, we can use retrospectives for this or the continuous improvement, continuous learning to learn not only as a host, but together with the participants. So let's go back to the issues and see how an Obeya host would solve these using this priority list. We bring in the issues to the empty room. We have insight, no action, the end is brainstorm. We have the worst decisions, action, 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 but not real insight. And we have one person dominates. So it start, all starts with invitation. In normal meetings, this is just an email saying, come to the monthly planning meeting. Or take my example, I was pitching my uh, transformation plan to a management team. In, if this was not an ordinary meeting, but a host obey a session, I would invite not only management team, but also the team leaders and employees from the work floor. And I would say, let's co-create this together. Let's make this a working session. Let's see how we can transform together. And by setting this invitation, it's already less of the CEO comes to, comes to uh, pitch a set transformation. It's a more equal participation. And by saying it's a work session, we co-create, I already prevent it's just a brainstorm because I make clear we're here to take action. Second thing we can use is the room. Instead of having a fancy offsite uh, location, we can use a room that near the workspace, a room that's accessible where people feel safe and easy to speak up. This again helps to prevent the issue from the CEO dominating the discussion. And here is virtual management. This is a key aspect, I think, in Obeyas, which we can use to prevent all kinds of issues. For example, if you have insight with no action, the endless brainstorm, you can use visual management to add a little to do and done. Then automatically, people will not only look at the insights, but they will question, hey, what do we do about this? And then next month, if you have a new meeting, then they will say, is this done or not? This really will help uh, get to both the insight as well as the action part. And as for the dominating person, often information is key. So by making information easily accessible in the room and transparent, there's no information disadvantage and you are more on equal playing fields to have equal participation. And then finally, we can make agreements on how we act. This is like a way to change behavior and change the habits. One of the things I like very much is have a, a big gong or singing bowl. When you strike it, there's this loud sound and almost naturally people will kind of stop and pause a bit and listen. This is such a great tool for rush decisions, for if we rush into actions, if we're too quick to act, a moment of reflection and pause to slow down. And this makes it a bit easier as well to interrupt because it might be very scary as participants to interrupt. It's much easier to just ring. So this is the first way we try to prevent these issues from happening by having all these kind of techniques. If this doesn't work, we move on to meeting design. We discussed before, you can do action points and time boxing and question rounds. And one thing I like very much is liberating structures. This is a set of techniques that anybody can do to shift the interaction in the meeting and to cultivate better meeting habits. One particular liberating structure I like a lot is this one. What, so what, now what? With what, you basically look at the obeya. 
and get a shared understanding about the facts. With so what, you generate insights. So what means, what does it matter? What does it mean? And people can place post-its on the insights they have and the things they find important or not. And then finally you ask, now what? Given these insights, what do we do about it? And this is a very simple meeting structure coming from liberating structures, I find working better than just having open discussion and action points. And it really solves both having insight and no action, as well as rush decisions. And for the dominant person, there's also a liberating structure I like a lot. It's called one, two, four, all. Because in a group discussion, there's limited time to think. Only one person can speak. So what we do is first individually you think about what you want to say, what you think about the topic. Then you make a buddy, somebody next to you, and in duos you discuss, what do you think of this? And both persons get chance to think and to speak. Then finally, you make groups of four and you ask, what do we as four have to say about this? And then in the end, you get to the groups of four and you all share what you think about this. This is a way to give everybody more thinking and speaking time and to facilitate an equal distribution using uh, meeting design techniques. Then finally, we have prepare an intervention. And again, we can use room to our advantage. With visual management, we can actually direct and point to the visuals to make people remind them what it is all about. We get literally the same picture and shared understanding using this. This will help get to the point and uh, prevent uh, getting sidetracked. And also striking the gong is a way uh, you can do yourself as an example uh, to do an intervention. And then finally, we have to reflect and improve. This is something I learned from the agile world. We do retrospectives. So you can visualize on the wall things you want to keep doing, things you want to stop doing, and things you need to investigate further. Using visual management, using these retrospectives, we can all uh, keep learning both attendees as well as the host yourself. As you will notice, in the beginning of hosting, you will do a lot of facilitation, meaning there's a lot of interventions, a lot of doing, a lot of designing meetings. But as a facilitator, it's not your purpose to be there policing everybody and making sure everything uh, works well. Your job it is to cultivate good meeting habits. So over time, you will shift from doing to more being, from designing meetings to them becoming a routine and from intervening a lot to having trained good habits. People themselves will have productive meetings. And from the big learnings and completely turning the sessions around to having small adjustments. I've shared now a little technique, but this is called the art of Abeya hosting. What it makes an art is this. I cannot give you one answer, one formula or one technique to make this happen. You have to create, have the feeling of flow of how it happens. And it is personal as well. I shared before that I worked as a nonviolent communication trainer, where I worked with conflict resolution, cultivating compassion. And here in hosting, I noticed it starts with hosting yourself. The other day, I was hosting a session after recovering from COVID. I was at home, I was facilitating digital, a room full of people in a physical place. So you can imagine I was not very present and the meeting was kind of well, it didn't really was this wonderful energetic session. So already I learned I have to be really present to make a good session, but I learned more. It also uh, learns me about personal growth because I was blaming myself in the beginning for this. I did it wrong. I was not fully present. I was not available. Actually, um, it was also management turned late. Also, it was another session planned on top of my Obeya session. So there were all kinds of other reasons as well that a bio session was not really working. And I learned by hosting myself and reflecting that I should not only blame myself, but also uh, uh, get the conditions right for good hosting and make some demands of what is needed to have this work. And then finally, it can be very scary to interrupt the big CEO making plans. So this will really teach you about how to stay calm, how to be bold, how to deal with your own emotions of uncertainty because you never know what's going to happen. And then finally, what I think makes it an art is as a host, you cannot force anything to happen. It's really up to the participants themselves to create together 
solutions to problems, to move from insight to action. So you're not here as some police agent trying to make everything work. You're re- here to create the good environment, the good room and the habits. The people themselves have to click it. And there's a strange paradox, because on one hand, if you're the perfect Obeya host, they will not notice that you are there. It seems like a natural flow. People have good habits, the room is so wonderful, everything just flows. At the same time, we know from the blind spot, if you don't pay attention to meeting dynamics, you get the same old habits again, and the same are people dominating. So there's this inherent paradox of letting go of control, of being invisible and flying on the wall, at the same time being present and giving love and attention which I find which makes it really an art, knowing when to intervene and when not. This was my talk for today. And I'd like to now open the space for any questions. And um, afterwards, I'd like to invite to connect with me on LinkedIn to continue the conversation about uh, Obeya hosting. I can send you materials, slides of this presentation, getting started with Obeya, the training module. So first I'm curious about any questions you have. So I see one, which is who should be the Obeya host? Well, I think um, as said, it's a role, not a function. So it can be um, anybody actually, but they have to meet two conditions. First, this person needs to have time and energy to make it its purpose. So while you might do other things as well in your job, if you're in the Obeya, you need to be hosting. Second, the Obeya host draws upon uh, facilitation skills, team coaching skills. So you need to be proficient at facilitation and team coaching and have a feeling for um, uh, these things to do this well. So another question is, how can we sustain the right behavior so the team can uh, Continue running Obeya in the future. Yeah, so here I see um, a little, um, um, I think there always needs to be somebody putting love, attention, energy in the room. And even if you have this perfectly trained, high-performing team that can keep learning themselves, if we don't pay attention to it, then it slowly erodes over time and old habits creep back in. Um, and yeah, this requires, I think, real coaching skills. Um, um, using the retrospectives in the end really help by making it a shared purpose and shared uh, goal that we say, let's make this a correct meeting together, not only me as the host. And if we like, we can spend some time uh, um, um, doing this uh, uh, life at issue that you brought in. So we can brainstorm together how we uh, um, would solve an issue. So let me turn to the chat and see if there's any issue that you uh, uh, voted for. So see that Kat Raju says, identification of problems mostly as an issue that, um, that happens. I wanna ask, are you willing to share a bit about this um, um, on stream? Hi, Mark. Uh, <clears throat> um, you are talking about uh, my, you know, the Obeya, mostly what happens, uh, we uh, identify the problems. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, by the time, you know, an hour is finished, and then we walk out and then uh, take the actions outside the Obeya room. Uh, that's how it is done. And I'm the owner of that uh, Obeya room where, uh, you know, we, we make sure that what is the status, or what's the progress. Uh, and then mostly identifying the problem, that's what is happening. So I used to wonder uh, what really the host, uh, what really host role is. This is the first time I'm hearing, you know, Obeya host. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was curious for me to learn from here and how to use it uh, in my future uh, Obeya meetings. Yeah. So as a host, it's your job to move people from inside to action by cultivating better habits. And what we can try here is uh, we can try, I have an, a worksheet here. I'm sharing my screen. So we can use this uh, worksheet to do the steps I just told. Um, so it first starts with the expected issue. So 
Uh, can you say in one sentence again, what's the thing that you don't want to happen, what you're scared of happening? The same repeated problems, you know, which I don't yeah. want to hear. Yeah. yeah. So you see the same repeated problems happening again and again. Yeah. And and this is um, um, so. Then we move to what do we? What was the positive version of this? What do we do once? Um, could you just say what would you love to happen here? I mean, I want to. Uh... I go for the actions close to right the problems are solved mm -hmm. yeah so it means problems get solved um yeah and uh, get solved and do not return and here um i can give some some theory right um because we i'm talking about this diamond again and again uh this diamond of um moving from insight to action. What happens if a problem reoccurs is that we do not have generated enough insights. We are too quickly to move to action that are likely to be quick fixes and uh, do not really resolve the root cause. Uh, or it might be that we talk about the issue, we don't get to action at all. Um, so if we would be an Ambaya host, we try to cultivate the good habits uh, with hosting techniques. So we first try to use the invitation the workspace visual management to resolve this. Um, so if I would think about this problem, I would really uh, work on the invitation. Um, if there's one particular problem that keeps returning, I would really make this the invitation to people. Do you notice as well, we keep having this problem. Let's have a session about how to solve this problem uh, and then how to solve it really uh, deeply and prevent it from returning. Um, this is the first thing you could do. Then um, by using visual management, um, you can make uh, perhaps track the problem from, from happening. So if you would have say a monthly Obeya session with the people, then make it visual if it happened this month or not. And by really making it visible, you create a sense of urgency. Like, yes, again and again, this happens. So you can use um, visual management to kind of track the severity and occurrence of the problem. So as Obeya host, you would collaborate with the Obeya builder. This can be one person or it can be different persons. You say, how can we visualize in the room that it is, it is about this problem? It keeps happening again. And I want to show people it's happening again and again. Um, second you can do is um, um, making agreements. So one agreement you would make is um, um, you would start a reflection with people. Hey, I noticed that we have solved this problem many times before, but it keeps returning. Uh, so we agree with each other that um, we make a ask for a timeout if we wish to a decision this time. That we really take time to reflect and to have a deep dive to resolving the issue this time. And this can already be part of the invitation as well. Uh, perhaps it needs to have an extra session to really focus on, on this specific problem. Um, so, uh, again, the specific visual management depends on the problem you're having, and the invitation, again, depends on the specific problem. Um, so we have agreements, we have um, visual management, we have the inv invitation. Um, we can all already use this to prevent the issue from happening. And then uh, the second thing is, uh, we have to find the critical moment. So can you share, perhaps, um, what is the moment that causes this problem to reoccur? Is it because people rush to a decision? Is it because one person is dominating it and cutting the decision short? Is it because... It's mostly people are uh, rushing, you know, that's the reason, yeah. Ah, yes, okay. So then we can have the agreement of the gong, right? That it re would really be something I would recommend. Uh, you could use... Uh, 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 agreement, slow down, and uh, use gong um, or some other kind of singing ball or way to time out and really slow down and reflect. Uh, another thing, and this depends on your style as a host, some people, they open a meeting with a little poem or a little kind of quote, inspiring quote, 
and they have a, like a moment to really formally open the meeting. And what this does is it keeps, um, it helps people that are rushing in the day to have a moment of, oh yeah, let's mentally arrive at a meeting. Um, another thing we often use in the agile community is using a check-in, give people time to arrive and to see how they're doing, to slow down. Um, and this really helps to set the scene. And these are the things that a host would do, uh, similar to a dinner party. You make sure that the table is right, the food is good, the, the room is nice. And these are all little things you can do that prevent you from being the facilitator who works really hard and tries to kind of uh, do a lot of effort. And this gets you into this effortless thing. It seems like flow happens, but actually uh, you did a lot of small things to make this happen. And then, uh, of course, in a critical moment, people will rush to a decision. So then you need to prepare an intervention. Um, you need to have something a little trigger in your mind um, um, that helps you to uh, kickstart your action. So could you name one moment that you notice a decision is being rushed? I mean, when, when the problems are critical, right? <clears throat> the, the decisions are faster or people, they want to get something done. So that's yeah. how it is getting rushed, yeah. Yeah, and, and then if we zoom in to the actual meeting, is it that there is like no time left and people start rushing? Or is it that perhaps a, a boss or CEO says we need to have a decision? Or what's the, what's the actual sentence or, or moment that people start rushing? Yeah, that's the timeline, right? We have to finish it by tomorrow. By yeah. this time, uh, we have to deliver. So that's the timeline driving this, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so then I really recommend paying attention next meeting. To what's the critical moment people start rushing? It could be finished by tomorrow. When this happens, you need to, you know, uh, sound the gong, ring, uh, hit the gong, or you have to say, um, wait a minute. And this needs to be a really simple and easy thing you can do because it's, it, as a facilitator, as a host, it can be very hard to, you know, uh, uh, if everybody's rushing, how will you stay calm? This requires something for you as a host to do. So it really happens to have a trigger and a quick sentence that you can do to interrupt these old habits. And then when it's interrupted, we can uh, create more uh, time. Yeah, it's, uh, thank you. Thanks for uh, taking time yeah. and uh, helping me, Mark. Yeah. yeah, you're welcome. So um, let me uh, close the screen sharing and move to some other questions. Um, so I hope to illustrate here that this is a way we can use the priority list and use all kinds of hosting techniques to prevent issues from happening uh, using facilitation skills and a bit more than that. Um, I see a question, what's the max amount of people in an Obeya session? When is it still effective? Um, so here I see uh, basically you have two sizes. One size is a group conversation size, which is about uh, six to eight people. This is a group where you can have a good conversation as a group together. When it gets bigger than six or eight, uh, then it becomes hard to have group discussions because only one person can talk and the others have to listen. Here, it's still possible to have Obeya sessions. I myself like to have them with like 30 or 50 people because then you have the management team as well as the team leaders or department leaders all in the same room. And this gives often in organizations I work for a nice uh, co-creation, not only that the top is joining or one team is joining. And when I have uh, 30 people in the room, I cannot afford to have group conversation because this will not give enough time for people to all participate. And then I will use things like liberating structures and breakout rooms to give people time in the breakout rooms to discuss things together and only use the uh, time with all together to share conclusions. So I often have a flow where there's like a question, what shall we do next month? And people, they go in breakout rooms and think about this. And then we come together and the groups report back what they think is a good idea to do next month. And by having this flow of breakouts and together, it's possible to have uh, larger events. Any other questions?
All right, then let me share you one more thing. Um, it's a nice uh, thing you can screenshot. Um, so here's a list of things. Uh, I didn't invent hosting myself. I learned from a lot of good people. Littering structures, uh, the art of hosting and harvesting conversations that matter. Uh, um, so here's a list, you can make a screenshot. I can send you the slides afterwards if you connect on LinkedIn. Um, to give you some more learning and teaching uh, about uh, art, the art of hosting and the art of Obeya hosting. And I'm happy to talk more and to teach. Uh, uh, you can connect on LinkedIn and I can send you um, uh, slides and uh, uh, some ebooks and some materials. So thank you for joining me today and uh, hope to speak to you soon.